My college career was over. I got offered a job to become a hospital administrator. Two-year program, $75,000 job. And right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. Let me tell you about my daddy. When I was a little boy, my daddy would always pick me up. When he came home from work, he'd pick me up. When he saw me in the nursery after church, he'd pick me up. No matter how long he worked, no matter how tired he was, my daddy would always pick me up. So when I had my kids, I would always pick up my kids. When I got home, sometimes I was tired. They have a bottle in one hand, and they just lifted up the other hand, and they knew what daddy was supposed to do. My job was to pick them up. This is a spiritual interaction. When you pick up a child, it is a spiritual transaction. When you pick up a child, you change their perspective. When you pick up a child, all of a sudden they can see the world the way you see it. I don't care what your children have done, there is nothing they can do for you to stop picking them up. When my daughter's a drug addict, I don't care, pick her up. My son messes up, I don't care, pick him up. I don't care. You pick them up. That is your job, mama. That is your job, daddy. That is your job, grandma. That is your job, granddad. Your number one job is to pick them up and change their perspective. My saddest day, one day, my daddy looked at me and he said, boy, you're too big, I can't pick you up anymore. But when he couldn't pick me up physically, he would pick me up emotionally. He would pick me up spiritually. I had a great dad because he would always pick me up. He would always change my perspective. So my daddy called me on the phone, he asked me a question. He said, son, you had a tough year, what's next? I said, dad, I'm gonna be a hospital administrator. He said, not bad, but let me ask you a question, son. Do you believe you're an NBA player? You cannot produce yourself in image, son. If you don't think so, go take the job. But if you believe you're an NBA player, go for it. My dad had the self-control and discipline and waited for my answer, and my answer was yes. You're right, Dad. I can't work the rest of my life. But playing in the NBA is a dream. I've had it ever since I was a little boy. He said, go for it, son. I limped back into my coach's office with a cast on my foot. I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? I asked that question four years in a row. With tears in his eyes, he said, son, when I recruited you, I heard you was a mama's boy. But I'm here to tell you, you just like your daddy. But what, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, do two things you can play in the NBA. Lose 20 pounds or shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. I think you should be a motivational speaker, son, but if you lose 20 pounds or shoot a three-point shot with range, you can play in the NBA. I lost 20 pounds, and every day I would shoot 500 shots a day, every single day. I got invited to training camp with the Dallas Mavericks, and not only did I make the team, I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the Dallas Mavericks to start opening night. Could you imagine what was going through my mind? I had not started a basketball game since high school. I got to the arena and they dimmed the lights and they put the spotlight right on me. Right through the spotlight I saw my mom, my dad, and all my brothers and sisters. They surprised me at the game. Then I saw my dad. And I just pumped my fist. And he pumped his fist. And tears streamed down my face. Thank you for all those timeouts. <laughs> Thank you for making sure I was always home when the street lights came on. Thank you for making sure I could always hear your voice. Thank you for always changing my perspective. I know what it feels like to sit on a bench. I know what it feels like to get knocked down. I know what it feels like to have a hope and a dream. 
and nobody believes in it but a few people. Go for your dreams. Don't live life with regrets. Go for your dreams. Don't live life with regrets. Go for your dreams. Don't live life with regrets. I could always hear my daddy's voice. You have children, you have grandchildren. Can your children and grandchildren hear your voice? I could always hear my daddy's voice. He would say, go out, have a good time, play with your friends, but don't let the street lights beat your home. When I started my motivational speaking business, I called my daddy and said, daddy, I'm gonna be a motivational speaker. He said, son, you think you can be successful at it? I said, yes, sir. You think you can make a lot of money at it? I said, yes, sir. He says, go for it. That's all my daddy said to me was go for it. So when I think about life, when I think about my goals, one thing he did for me as a father is to make sure I was always where I was supposed to be. He would have me write my goals down and he would check in periodically, basically asking me, Walter, where are you supposed to be? Fathers, do you realize how powerful that is? If you ask that question of your kids, what are your goals? What are your future? Who do you want to be when you grow up? And every now and then check in by asking a simple question. Where are you supposed to be? The bell is ringing and I came to ring your bell and ask you the question, Father, where are you supposed to be? And ask that question to your children. Where are you supposed to be? And don't you quit until you're number one.